Hello everyone, my name is Wayne, and my Disney Infinity ID is Sumerian. Welcome to Fun with Logic, where we'll be going into the toy box and doing some more advanced connections of the creative toys, just to see what we can make Infinity 2.0 do for us. This tutorial is going to be on the basics of chaining logic gates together, part 1. I would strongly suggest you check out some of the Creativitoy tutorials if you're new to logic gates, as I would just be skimming how they work. There are some great tutorials out there, actually. Uh, you can even go to the Disney Infinity YouTube page for all sorts of tutorials. Um, logic gates are actually so powerful that the Infinity team has created three separate tutorials for them, covering basic, intermediate, and advanced uses. So a logic gate, I will skim over it, a logic gate is basically a switch. Uh, you can open it, you can close it, and that's about it. Then you send it an input, and if it's open, you'll get a signal out of output, and if it's closed, you'll get a signal out of input block. Doesn't sound that powerful or that great, but really, everything in the digital world nowadays is just made of millions and millions of switches, and they do all sorts of crazy things. So if you actually tie a few logic gates together, um, you can do some pretty incredible things in Disney Infinity 2.0. Um, so this tutorial is actually uh, an answer to a question that was given to me recently. Uh, someone had a scenario of what they wanted to accomplish. They wanted to set up three pressure plates, uh, color-changing pressure plates, and they wanted to have it so that when the person had them all set to the color they wanted, uh, an event would trigger. I'm not going to use clean one, so let's use brave pressure plates. So I already gave them the answer on how to do it, but it's a little easier to do a video on it than it is to send it a text. Plus, it's a great way to explain the basics of chaining logic gates together, because this is a pretty simple version of doing them. So I'm actually going to place three color changing plates here. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a little mini game where hmm, that's actually not gonna that's not the right plate, is it? Ugh, wrong plates. Sorry about that. Thought they looked weird. Anyway, what we're gonna do is make a little mini game where uh when the user gets the right colors going, then we're going to trigger the next event. In this case, and like you see most people do in these tutorials, we're going to use a party cam just because it's a very obvious visual trigger and it's really easy to set up. So in order to make this entire thing work, we're going to need of course those three color changing switches and we are going to need some logic gates, one for each of them. And that is absolutely all we're going to need to make this little mini game work. Now, let's check here. The orange, green, purple, red. Alright, so I'm going to make it so uh, the colors are going to be red, purple, and blue. If you get them in that order, those colors, this game is going to work and it's going to fire off the party cannon. Otherwise, it's not going to do anything. So, first thing we're going to do is, um, well, as Jose Avalos, and I hope I'm, correct, I'm pronouncing that correctly, is always telling us, logic gates are defaulted open. That means when you put them down, they're open, and when you start your toy box, they're all going to be open. So we're going to take advantage of that, and we're going to say, I said red, purple, blue, right? I think I said red, purple, blue. That's the color I'm going to do right now, anyway. So, when this one turns red, I'm going to close that logic gate. When this one turns purple, I'm going to close that logic gate. And when this one turns blue, ugh, I'm going to close this logic gate. It's a pretty good start so far, but the problem is right now that if 
I hop on this switch. Now that I have hit red, that logic gate is closed and it's never going to open again. So, what we're going to do here is uh, we could go by the fact that we just see blue is the color after red. So we could just say when it turns blue, open that logic gate. But, wrong button, of course. But if you look under properties, you can set it to a, uh, the color sensors to randomly pick what color. And I want this gate to work no matter what. So what I'm going to do is red is the color that turns it off. So every other color opens this logic gate. Blue, orange, green, and purple. We'll open that logic gate. And on this one, purple is what closes it, so every other color opens it. Now you could use the color changed to try, and I have tested that before, but it works sometimes and it doesn't other times, so I just prefer to go by the colors, that way it always works. It's a little bit more work to do, but it works every time, and, and that's what you're looking for. So, And on this one, blue is what closes it, so every other color opens it. Purple and finally red. Okay, so now we've got it so that if you hit the right color, the logic gate above it is going to close and every other color is going to open. Great, it's not doing anything yet for us, but it's a good start. So now we want to think about this. And since we know if we send input into it, if the logic gate's open, it's going to go out the output. If it's closed, it's going to go out the input block. So, since we want this to only work when the logic gate is closed, we're going to say input block is actually the input for the second gate. We're going to say input block is the input for the third gate. And input block with the third gate is going to fire off some fireworks. Great. We're actually almost done already. It's a pretty simple tutorial. But we have no input yet. So what can we use to input? Send an input to these logic gates. I'd say, if I'm thinking about it logically, the only time I'm going to bother checking if all the logic gates are at the right color is if one of them turns to the right color. And we all know when each of these turns to the right color, the logic gate above it closes. So I'm actually going to go into this logic gate and say, hey, when you close, I want you to send an input to the first logic gate. And we're sending it there because of the way we've tied them together. Uh, the input blocked from this gate goes to this gate's input, the input blocked from this gate goes to this input, and the input blocked from this gate goes to the fireworks. So we have to send the input to the first gate. And that, what that'll do is if it's closed, it'll send the signal on. If it's closed, it'll send the signal on. We already know this one's closed because that's what we did it with from. And so we'll get fireworks. Well, for right now, the game would sort of work. And let's actually try it. So, oh. red. Ah, purple, blue. Hey, look, a firework in the sky. Pretty cool, and it happens instantly, which is why it's great. But unfortunately, it's only going to work right this second if blue is the last color we get right. 
Let's set it to blue again. It's going to work. But if I set this guy to purple, nothing's going to happen. And that's because it's only looking at this guy closing. So we're going to do the same thing on this logic gate. If he closes, we're going to send input to the first logic gate. Now, if he's the last uh, color to be correctly changed, fireworks are going to work again. Now, I know some of you are snickering at me because you know what's about to happen. Is I'm about to have hit close on the first logic gate. And I cannot select the first logic gate because you can't hook it up to itself. What I can do, however, is think about it logically and say, well, the first logic gate, I'm saying, when you close, do something. Well, we already know the first one's closed because that's where the signal's coming from. So if I send it to the input of the second one, it'll be doing the exact same thing. We know the first one's closed. It'll be checking to see the next two are closed. So let's try this out now. Let's change this guy to purple. And it works. And let's change this guy back to red. And it works. So there you go. A simple little game for color changing pressure plates to set them up so that they will uh, set off a trigger event for whatever you want. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and I will be making a part two shortly to go more in depth on logic gates because we've only used the input block. We can do a lot more if we use the output and the input block. At the same